Scorpios, Sawblaze, Shatter, Beta, Blacksmith. Top attack bots have been growing in number and power with each passing season. With our weapon placed on top of our bot, we should have an advantage when fighting these types of bots, but defending against their attacks is not as simple as you might think. I'm Nick, weapons engineer for Team Bloodsport, and this is the Ferris Wheel. You may remember the disc that we used to defend our top against Scorpios last season. Unlike our other Season 5 weapons, the disc came out of that season mostly unscathed. We were happy with its performance and could use it again, but in BattleBots we constantly have to evolve to keep up with the field. So far this year we've seen Try Again, the updated Try Bar, the Classic Bar, our updated Long Bar, the Club Sandwich, our new Thick Bar attempt, and now we bring you the Ferris Wheel, the updated version of the disc. So, as with any new design, this concept started with a problem that we needed to solve. The disc was designed to act as our top armor against a hammer saw bot like Scorpios or Sawblaze, but as we fought our way through the beta bracket last season, we realized we didn't have as good of an answer for pure hammer bots. If we had ended up fighting Beta and they got us pinned to a wall, their hammer would likely be able to hit through the gaps of the disc in a way that's much less likely for a spinning hammer saw. Even more concerning to us was a bot like Shatter, as we watched them throw their hammer into weapons that were still spinning, to great effect and with no fear. They did lose their hammerhead in those exchanges, but with engineers as diligent as the BOTS FC team, we saw it as only a matter of time before they got that problem solved. And even before then, one good hit from a bot that powerful could be all they'd need to do serious damage. Alright, you say it, but as long as we keep the weapons spun up, it can't be that bad, right? Well, let's do the math. If we assume that their hammerhead is traveling down into our blade at 50 miles per hour, the maximum distance it could cover in between passes of the disc's arms would be about 9 inches. That leaves more than enough time for Shatter to pierce our aluminum top plate before the next spoke arrives to swat their hammerhead away. What's worse is that if they did manage to embed their hammer into our top panel, our own weapon would proceed to drag that spike through the rest of our robot, basically a nightmare scenario. The best way to prevent this would be to eliminate the gaps in the weapon and have a solid disc. Unfortunately, we just don't have the weight for that. At half inch thick, the disc is already our thinnest weapon, and we're not going to go any thinner. We could fill the gaps with something lightweight like polycarbonate or UHMW, but that approach is harder to implement and hasn't worked out well for bots like Captain Shredderator. The next best way to prevent the nightmare scenario is to limit their hammer's travel depth, which means we need to reduce the time in between spoke passes by adding more spokes. To bring that max depth safely above our top panel, we need a lot of spokes. 18 should be about right. And there you have it, the Ferris Wheel. By the way, shout out to Shay from the Jackpot team for coming up with that name. Her pun game is on point. Of course, there are some trade-offs that we make when we go from 3 spokes to 18. The spokes become very thin, which is scary when each one may need to take a direct hit from above. There are also some advantages though. Namely, the spokes support the rim all the way around, so the entire weapon is stiffer, and the outer rim doesn't need to be as heavy. To brace the spokes themselves, we added a ring of tiny support struts about halfway out. They may look thin, but they actually do a lot to keep the spokes from bending by bracing them all against each other. So that all sounds good in theory, but now the thing actually has to get made. We learned with last year's disc that a large, thin, complex shape like this can be prone to warping during the cutting process. Generic AR500 is also generally not held to tight flatness tolerances in the first place. In fact, generic AR often varies wildly in many of its properties, except for abrasion resistance, which is what's valued in its day job. To make sure that this weapon starts flat and stays flat, we need to make sure our material is held to a high standard. That's where today's featured sponsor comes in, CM. MC Impact Metals. The Ferris Wheel is made from their True Shield 500 armor plate, which is a specially formulated ballistic steel alloy meant to absorb impacts and protect whatever's behind it. Their True Flat guarantee ensures that the armor plate will meet strict flatness tolerances, perfect for this blade. We were impressed by the extensive material documentation carried on their website, which includes all of their tolerances, material makeup, yield and tensile strength, and the information we were most excited about, Charpy Impact Test Ratings. These specs allowed us to make better informed design decisions and predict our blade's performance with much more certainty. They made many of the armor and weapon components used by both Bloodsport and Retrograde this year. Huge thanks to CMC Impact Metals, and be sure to visit their website at cmc.com. Of course, it's too late now for us to fight Shatter this season, but week 4 of BattleBots Champions is here and we're in the Scorpios bracket. Can we make it through the gauntlet for a rematch with the Zodiac Killer of BattleBots and get a chance to use this blade? Or will the Ferris Wheel join the key in the pile of unused blades? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more design overviews and fight recaps. 
Thanks for watching.